Good morning, African Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys, and the message reads like this. Hello, African Confessions. How are you? I thought that I had seen it all, and I thought that I was seeing myself above the world, just like I was ruling it and I thought that riches was my success. Yes, if you get rich in a clean way, we can call that success. That is why we say this person has succeeded in life. But as for my money, my money is not clean money. But what can we do about it? Money is money because when I go to the bank, they don't tell me that this money is full of blood. They just treat me as they would treat another person who is a hard-working person. I made quick money, and in our family, what my father used to do and his father before him, they used to do this thing that is called from blood equals to money. Blood equals to money. I am a ritualist. When I first saw that equation, which says blood equals to money. I thought that my father was just a magician, but now I am so used to this equation. The first time that my father wanted to show me this equation, he took me into this other room that was in our house. But funny enough, when we entered into that room, because I just thought that this was just a pantry area where we used to keep a lot of basic foods in that room. It was just a normal pantry. But when we went inside that room, he pushed another cupboard, then everything transformed. Everything in that room turned into darkness. There was darkness everywhere. Then I saw a light in the middle of that room. Then he told me that we had to kneel down. He told me not to look at the person who was going to appear in that room. I felt a sudden rush of wind that was entering into that room where me and my father we were. All along, I thought that my father, whenever he would go into that pantry, he would be studying his Bible because... All that I knew growing up is that many nights my father will take his blanket and his Bible. Then he will say that I am going into my holy mountain because today I want to speak with my God. You have to be careful when someone tells you that they are speaking with their God because as far as I know, out there, there are many gods. But which one is the real God? We don't even know. I really feel sorry for all of these poor people that praise all of their prophets and pastors whenever their pastor is standing in front of them and is going on and on about his God because you don't know which God he is referring to. Even though my father was a ritualist, but there were nights when something bad would be happening in his business you will say that tonight do not prepare food for me because I am fasting. After that, that is when you would go into his so-called holy mountain. But this thing, I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Why did my father say that the pantry in which we kept most of the basic foods was his holy mountain? But I never bothered to ask my father. But on that night, when my father took me into his so-called holy mountain, that is when I started to understand everything that was going on. When we entered into that pantry, whilst we were kneeling down like that, my father had given me that instruction that I was not supposed to look at the man who was going to visit us in that room that we were in. After I had felt a sudden rush of wind, I felt that there was someone who was with us in the room, but I was so scared to look up because even my father, he didn't even look at the person that he was speaking with. They spoke, but I could not understand the language that they were using. After that, that is when my father rose up from where he was kneeling. This was after that man who had visited me and my father whilst we were in that room had left the room. After my father had gotten up from the place where he was kneeling down, he went to this other place that looked more like an altar. He took 
out something that was like a basin and it was filled with fresh blood. This whole thing surprised me because blood, I know that blood can smell and in this pantry there was no freezer or anything. It was quite hot. So I don't know how it was possible that this blood that was inside the basin that my father was holding was still fresh. Then my father, after saying his prayers, he started pouring all of that blood on the floor. And when I looked at that blood, I saw that the moment that the blood will be hitting the floor, it will be transformed into money. After that, my father took the money and he said more prayers. Then me and him, we walked out of that room. That is how I was introduced to all of these rituals by my father. My father owns a logistic company and he said that he took this tokoloshi when I was only two years old and he took this tokoloshi by the help of his own father. And he told me that this whole thing, it runs in our family. There is nothing to be afraid of. Until now, this thing is giving me money. He said that it is not a bad thing to have a tokoloshi. The only thing that you have to remember are the rules. The rules, my son, he said, if you follow the rules, you will not face any challenges. You will live a happy life. Like the rules that were given to him, he is not supposed to give or help any of his relatives financially most of our relatives they are living in poverty yet we are rich but he said that rules are rules they are meant to be followed not to be broken i went with my father when we traveled we traveled to malawi where i was given this thing that he said it is more like a tokoloshi when i came back i was supposed to sacrifice someone and already, whilst we were in Malawi, that man who was helping us, he said, you have to choose someone, a spirit for a spirit, because now I am going to give you a spirit of a dead person. I am going to give you a spirit of a dead woman. That woman that I am going to raise up from the dead, she will work for you and she will make money for you. But the moment that I will raise her up from the dead, in the spiritual realm, they will need a replacement, irregardless of what kind of a replacement it will be. That is why you see all of these sacrifices that are going on. So in the spiritual realm, in place of that spirit that will be risen from the dead by that man who was assisting us whilst we were in Malawi, I offered the spirit of my own sister, meaning that I had to kill my sister. I had to sacrifice the life of my sister. The reason why I had chosen my sister, it is because ever since we were growing up, I always felt sorry for my younger sister because of the way that she was born. My sister could not do anything. She could not walk. She always stayed in her wheelchair. In fact, at our house, there was this woman who was always there to assist my sister because she was born as a crippled. And I always felt sorry for my dear sister. And ever since I knew that my father was a ritualist, even though he had denied and he had said that he didn't know anything about how my sister was born being a cripple. He was not the one who was responsible. But deep down, I suspect that the reason why my sister was born as a crippled, it is because of all of these rituals that my father did. Because when I had sacrificed my sister, my father tried to protest whilst we were still in Malawi, but that man who was assisting us, he said, you, you have to shut up because am I not speaking to your son? Is your son not a man that he can speak for himself? That is why my father remained quiet. But after we had returned back home, me and my father, we had a debate. He told me that later in the future, he had already assigned a position for my crippled sister, meaning that he was going to sacrifice my sister, but not now. That is why we were having that debate. We debated for a couple of days and I told my father that if you do not let me sacrifice my little sister, then it means that 
all of those things that we did whilst we were in Malawi, they would turn against me because the spirit of that woman whom had been raised from the dead when we were still in Malawi, she was already visiting me in my dreams and she was saying that you have to release me because i am caught between two worlds i cannot go back to the spiritual realm because whenever i try to go back i am told that i do not belong there i have to go back to the land of the living but when i try to knock on the door of the living the door cannot open because i do not belong in the land of the living meaning that for her space to be available in this physical world i had to sacrifice my sister in time otherwise she was going to fight against me so that she can find somewhere to stay because she said that the existence in which she was finding herself in it was a terrible existence not knowing where to go being caught between two existing worlds so my father then finally agreed because I was having some blisters on my body and these were just physical manifestations that the spirit of that woman who was raised from the dead when we were still in Malawi, she was now fighting against me. After I had shown my father the blisters that were on my body, that is when he decided and he said tonight, I will leave you to sacrifice your sister. My father and my mother planned a vacation and whilst they were on their vacation, that is when I entered into that room. Then I sacrificed my sister. The day that they returned from their vacation, that is when my sister died. So the day of the burial, we made ourselves busy and I was not supposed to attend the burial of my sister. My father told me that I had to fly out of the country and I had to pretend as if I could not fly back into the country so that my sister can be buried whilst I will not be there. Because he said, if you bury your own sister and if you see a coffin being taken down into the grave, then she will return back to fight against you. And if you are not there to witness her being buried, then she will never be able to find you. Look for you. Yes, she will, but she will never be able to find you. I married my wife and I had three children, but my father then said that it was time for him to sacrifice one of my kids. This hurts me. When my father sacrificed my firstborn, I asked him, why did you do this to me? He said, I had to do this, son, because I had no option. When you sacrificed your sister and when I had told you that, Already, I had made an oath that I was supposed to sacrifice her, and when that time came, I didn't have any option than to sacrifice your own son. Yes, me and my father, we have all of these conversations as if we are having a normal conversation. Me and my father, we do a lot of rituals, and sometimes we do these rituals together. When I was crying over my son, after my father had sacrificed my son, he said, why worry? Because you are a man. If you are tired of your wife, are you not allowed? Doesn't the rules allow you to go out and have a child with another woman? That is when my father told me that he had chosen me out of his many kids. That is when my father confessed to me that he has other children apart from the children that he had with my mother. Then he said that you have to be glad that out of my many children that I have with many women, you are the one that I have chosen. Yes, to have money it is good, but there are days when I wonder if I have to go out there and look for help. There are days when I ask myself, should I continue doing this? Because after my father has died, I have to pass all of his legacy to one of my children. And all of my father's secret, even my mother, she knows. She doesn't know that my father has other kids out there with other women. But I know that all of the rituals that my father does, my mother knows. And my wife, she doesn't know that my father turned me into a ritualist. My father told me that we have to wait. There will come a place and a time 
when we will have to tell my wife that she has to know that I am a ritualist and all of the money that is in the family, it has to be protected and we have to follow the rules. I don't know when this will happen, but my father said, before I die, son, I promise you that before I die, it would never happen that one day in the morning, I would have just died. Before I die, I will tell you that on this day, son, I am going to die. Then we will have to tell your wife so that you and your wife, you can continue with this legacy. This legacy, my father said that it has been passed on from generation to generation. I am not looking for help, but this is my own cross that I am supposed to carry. Hi, dear listeners, right there was a message that I received that was forwarded to me by one of our admins. Please do not hesitate to contact us via our email address. Strange things do happen in this world.